Hi everyone, welcome to episode 8 of the Fitness Unplugged and today we're going to be talking about HIIT, also known as High Intensity Interval Training. And so we've got here uh, Rachel and Hello. Jeremy. Hey. They're going to be, we're actually, not they, we, we are actually going to be discussing what High Intensity Interval Training is all about. So I'm just going to throw the question right to Jeremy right now and he's gonna do the opening so what is HIIT all about okay so HIIT is actually high intensity interval training is where you push your body um, to a very high intense pace where um, the exercise that you can handle and then bring it down a bit to let your body recover and push it up again so that's how in basics it works you push your body and then you relax you push your body and then you relax so I have a question so Given that uh, you said like you want to increase the heart rate and then let it rest, increase the heart rate and let it rest. So actually, what is like the purpose or like who is the target for HIIT? Okay, the original target that when this whole training was done, it was for sprinters and high performance athletes. What actually this does for them is that it increases their maximal speed because it allows them to rest during the lap. However, nowadays, um, people are using it, um, even in the fitness industry, to actually burn body fat instead. Oh, wait, wait. How do you burn body fat during HIIT? Because from my physiological point of view, the best way to burn body fat is actually when you are exercising at 30 to 45% of your VO2 max. So can you uh, like, tell me more about how you burn fat during HIIT? Okay, so what the fitness industry nowadays belief is that when you do HIIT, um, after your training session, you will go through this thing called EPOC, which is energy post-oxygen consumption, where you're using oxygen to burn more body fat throughout the day. So are you really burning anything or like burning body fat at all? If you're like going for high intensity interval training workouts, like typically at like your big gyms and stuff like that, any one of y'all, do y'all do y'all think that there's actually epoch happening? Okay, from my point of view, to hit epoch at the end of your exercise, you must be exercising above your VO2 max. So you should be in a state where you're huffing and bending and you can't even catch your breath and you really feel like passing out. So that's when you hit over 100% of the VO2 max. So my question is, do you actually feel that way when you're attending all these HIIT classes? So, actually, what you're trying to say is that in actual fact, most people that go to the gym, actually, you're not really hitting that level where you're actually going to be burning body fat, but rather you're burning other stores in your body. That's right. So, then what's the point of us actually really going into a gym and like saying we're doing high intensity interval training, right? Correct? Correct. Yeah, so come on, let's, let's educate them a little bit. Let's tell them what they're actually doing in the gym. All right. So actually, most people, um, we are talking about the average person who hits the gym, they are not really hitting epoch even, close to epoch. Um, maybe they are doing 60%, 70%. And then again, it's very hard for them to monitor. It could be even less than that. Um, for example, if you're a person who has a fixed split routine that you do every week, and it's the same, same thing that you're doing every week, it's a very high chance that you're not even hitting 70% of your maximum heart rate. So Rachel, then is this like a marketing gimmick or is this a marketing tool? Yes, to I was actually... just about to mention this. Have you realised that people who actually go for all these HIIT classes are people who actually, uh, what I would say, office workers? So I don't see the point in going for all these HIIT classes to improve like your cardiovascular system if you're not really a runner or a sprinter. I think you're just better off going to a gym carrying weights, lifting weights, so you can maintain your VO2 max at about 40%. And that's good enough for you to burn fat. Mm -hmm. And also, like, don't spend too much time on the bicycle, like, pushing your heart rate up too high because if you just do that all the time as well, there are, like, problems that can occur from that, right? So you don't want to push too much into the aer aerobic all the way and too much into the high intensity as well. You want it to be a balance. Yes. Um, I'm like, yes, explain a little bit lah. Um, to have a balance, you need to do actually both. You need to have aerobic and anaerobic. Um, there will be people arguing that 
uh, high intensity is actually anaerobic, which is true. But once again, it brings us to the previous argument of how sure are you that you're hitting 80% to 100% of your max VO2. Uh, most of the time, like we said, it is not the case. So with that said, it would be better off for people to actually have a cardio day where they just focus on their cardio, going for about an hour jog or an hour run, and then have another day where you actually focus in the gym and focusing on the weights. Maybe a full body workout with weights would be good. Can I also mention that one of the attractive things about HIIT for people who are very busy is that it's usually about a 30 minutes kind of training. So for somebody who is busy, they will find this uh, 30 minutes a very good, uh, a very beneficial for them in, time, in terms of time. But you actually, if you just lift weights in the gym for 30 minutes, mm. the benefits would be the same. So you can just lift weights 30 minutes and still have an epoch. But you are burning fat still. You don't have to just be so obsessed with burning fat during the epoch session when actually you can be burning fat even during the workout by itself. So guys, H-I-I-T. It's a very, very big word that a lot of people love to use and the market loves to use. And I guess we've also been talking a lot about all these different kind of things and how it's really affecting you. And the thing is, marketing is always doing the number one thing, which is the negative of what you actually wouldn't want to do to yourself. So ask yourself a clear question. Am I really helping myself with these exercises or am I simply just giving money to these companies that are telling me that I'm doing high density interval training when you're absolutely not? And think about it in another way is that if you want to burn fat, there's also different ways to do it other than just exercise alone. There's also nutrition. There's also your own sleep patterns. There's a lot of different things that add on. So if you're also like, let's say, an office-bound worker, not drinking alcohol and stop drink, then to stop drinking alcohol alone will already cut a lot of different things out from your body, which will help you already lose a bit of weight. Right? So think about it. If there's sleep, if there's rest, if there's exercise, proper exercise, and everything else, and it's balanced, it's going to help you, right? Can I also mention, climbing the stairs up the MRT is also a good workout. It's also similar to HIIT, but at least you would, it wouldn't take up 30 minutes of time. You just climb the stairs twice a day, I think it's good enough for you as well. And if you really feel like you're very free, instead of going to the gym and saying, I've worked out, just take the lift all the way down and then walk up the stairs all the way back up to your office. You probably will have done an even harder workout as compared to doing it in the gym. Right, Jeremy? Yes, that's right. Um, most of the time when we take the lift and then we take the escalators, we are just standing stationary, which we don't actually put our bodies to good use. Why not take the stairs? Why not actually walk to the other end and take the stairs? And you will give your body much more of a cardiovascular workout as compared to you know going to the gym walking on the treadmill for 45 minutes and saying that oh i've done my cardio i've done my hit yeah so think about it in different perspectives rather than what the market is simply selling you i mean there's a million ways to really do alternative trainings rather than putting yourself within four walls and training and saying i have worked out because workout can be done anywhere anytime even seated at your chair your own desk chasing after the bus can be a workout. So there are tons of ways to do it. So you should never neglect one idea and throw it out the door and say, oh, because a social media tells me so, the people, of all my friends are telling me so, that's why I simply join it. Don't go, go, don't go into this because of peer pressure because sometimes peer pressure isn't going to help you totally. So always think twice before you make the decision. And with that, we've come to the end of high-intensity interval training. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, we'll be hearing more of them as well in the future episodes. And we'll have our guest speaker, Beatrice. And she'll also be not so much of a guest anymore. She'll also be contributing to more of our topics as well. So subscribe, Spotify, iTunes, Android, and all the other platforms that we're on. And you'll get to hear more of our annoying voices. Enjoy and have a good Friday if you're in Singapore. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.